Hi, uh, why I'm waiting for the first video I just made for 6.2 to finish, I think I'll go ahead and finish off the second one for 6.2. This is also the one I have two examples that I'm doing on the whiteboard and hopefully it'll work out tomorrow. Um, this is where I'm actually, I'm not just finding a probability, but I'm trying to find the distribution of a function of a random variable. So before, you know, we had some random variable, say x, that had an exponential distribution. And then we wanted to find something like, what's the probability that 3x plus 1 is bigger than, um, I'll just say, um, 3, for example. And then we would solve for x and get a probability statement and then integrate over x where it's defined and, and the support and get, get a probability value. But now what I actually want to do is if I make a new random variable, and in this case, let's say, uh, let's say I'm going to take that exponential and I'm going to square it, I'm going to call that a new random variable y. And what I would like is a function, a density function, f of y for that y. And it might seem simple, but don't be trying to take shortcut methods to get this. This is um, a tedious procedure. And I, there's a couple ways to do it. One of them is called the CDF technique, which I definitely prefer, and another is called method of transformations. And I'm okay with either that you prefer. I will teach the CDF technique. Just for me, there's a nice pattern, and I always feel like I understand the flow and how I'm coming up with the, uh, the bounds for integration. And it just uh, it makes it makes sense to me. So here's uh, let me just go through one nice one, maybe two, and then again tomorrow I'll do. There's two examples in the notes that I haven't supplied answers for. I'll do those on the whiteboard. So let x be a continuous random variable, and this is its density function over this interval. So I could have just said x is a uniform random variable on negative one to one. That's exactly what it is. So. If you look at this region um, here, this is negative 1 to 1, and f of x is just equal to a half um, area under the curve here, right? If I integrate here, that's 1. It's just a nice line. And now what I'm going to do is I will, I'm going to make a new random variable. I'm going to call it y. So y is just uh, 2x plus 1. Now, Recall, you know, x has this distribution over here, uh, one half, and now I want an actual f of y for the random variable 2x plus 1. I want to know f of y is, is something over some interval. So the CDF technique I'm going to follow every time. And so first what the CDF technique says is find the cumulative distribution function of capital Y. So, um, what is the CDF of Y? CF Y, I'm always going to start, that's just capital F of Y. That's what a cumulative distribution function is. And then, by definition, uh, capital F of Y is just the probability Y is less than or equal to little y. That's what we've always, I mean, back when we defined it. So, this right here is just by definition. I am not, I'm just saying what capital F of Y is. Now here what I'm always going to do, there's, I can't really go any further because I don't know anything about capital Y except what it is in terms of X. So what I'm going to do is sub in uh, Y in terms of X, whatever that function is I'm trying to find. So here I'm putting in 2X plus 1 because that's what, that's what we're defining Y to be. And now um, I have a nice probability statement that I could actually do some integrating if I could just get x by itself. And that's just going to take some algebra. So down here I'm doing the algebra. I'm just isolating x. I'm moving the 1 over, dividing by 2. So here's my statement. Now remember, um, x is defined on the interval negative 1 to 1. And now I want to integrate x with this being its upper bound. So I'm going to integrate from negative 1 up to the upper bound of y minus 1 divided by 2. I mean, if this was a number like uh, a third or a fourth, you would just be integrating x from negative 1 to a fourth. So here, right here, is, you know, it's just a value in terms of y, and just, you know, that's what I'm going to integrate up until. So you can see then in my integral, that's what I'm doing. I'm going from lower bound to upper bound. Um, f of x, here's f of x dx. And at the whole, at the end of this, you're going to get an expression in terms of y. 
And a lot of people get really excited like, oh, I finally have it. But recall that we were finding the CDF of Y. So this is capital F of Y. But very easily to get little f, I'm just going to take capital F, right, and take its derivative and I'll have little f. Okay, so down here you can kind of see that's what I'm going to do. Um, here's capital F of Y. I'm going to take derivative um, and that's just going to give me, oh, where am I taking derivative? Hmm, well, I'm finding support, but if I just take the derivative of this, right, I get one fourth. Last thing is the support. Remember, um, x was defined on the interval negative 1 to 1, and y is equal to 2x plus 1, so negative 1 gets converted to negative 1. If I put 1 in here for x, um, this gets converted to 3. So this is the bounds, and actually it makes perfect sense, right? In the very end, then we have f of y is 1 fourth from negative 1 to 3, and that is definitely a valid PDF. I mean, it checks out, it's legal, and it's not too surprising. What we did is we took a uniform, you know, that was defined over the interval negative 1 to 1. We took that random variable, we multiplied it by 2, and then we shifted it by 1. So it's not surprising then that the upper bound here went to 3, the lower bound went to negative 1, and now my probability function is a fourth because this is just the stretch of that interval. I still am uniformly defined because I applied a linear function to a uniform random variable. I'm still going to be a uniform distribution. So, um, you know, I think, I think a lot of people try to skip through or just take a derivative or forget all that. I think if you follow these steps, to me it makes sense. Everything's clear. You know your lower upper bounds. You know where where you're where when to integrate when to differentiate, and um, I'm just showing example six. I could have done exactly the same problem, but started off with a different um, x, and this x is exponential with a lambda of three. Um, notice I'm doing everything the same as I did before until I get to this step. Since f of x is exponential, that's what's going to go in there, and. Uh, same deal, I'm going to get a capital F of Y, and same deal, I'm going to integrate, and there is my um, PDF. And just to make sure it's legal, you can integrate over its support. See, it integrates to 1, everything's good. So, um, I did a bunch of these. This one, example 7, this time I stay with an exponential, but I went to a new distribution, Y equals X cubed. Uh, again, a little bit tougher, this is not a nice linear transformation, but I mean, I'm still using the same steps. You can see here CDF, definition, substitution, solve for x, set up integral, capital, or little f goes in there. You get your bounds. You'll get an expression in terms of y. That's capital F of y. Take a derivative, get little f, make sure he's valid. Life is good. That's my dog. She likes to crawl under my bed and sleep, and every once in a while she comes out to say hi. I think she's tired of these videos right now, and you probably are too. Um, I did a few more, like this one, just so you can see the limit of integration is not always the top bound. It just kind of depends on what statement you get. Here I'm trying to find x bigger than a statement with y, and y is going to become the lower bound. So that's why I like this method. There's no real guessing. I mean, I, I set up, I see what x's have to be defined over, and I go from there. and. I know my lim limits of integration will be correct. So um, more and more and more. And so example 10 I'm going to do again on the whiteboard tomorrow. Here's example 11. I'm just showing you the benefits, the law of unconscious statistician, how life is so good if you use that sometimes. And example 12. So I'm going to do 10 and 12 on the whiteboard for more practice. Okay, I will talk to you soon. And uh, my dog came out. You can hear her jingling. She came out to say goodnight too. Okay, talk to you soon.